Hello, hello. So we have another Choosing Vibrancy expert on today. This is Dr. Jill Driver, and she is a chiropractor. Um, and I don't know, I mean, I think a lot of chiropractic can be specialized these days, but I think you have really maybe taken it to a even higher notch of <laughs> of specialty. So Dr. Driver is a, a graduate of Life University in orthospinology. Did I say that right? That's the specialty I do, yes. Okay, that's the specialty mm -hmm. and is referred to as a upper cervical specialist. And I'm going to let you introduce that because I think that's a big part of your story, which mm -hmm. is why you became a chiropractor to begin with. And I've heard that before. I think that's kind of a common thing that mm -hmm. that someone in you know maybe in their childhood, teenage years, young adulthood had some sort of an injury mm -hmm. or accident, and got such great care and recovery themselves from chiropractic that they felt you know drawn to really choose that as a career. So I think that's a bit of your story. So and it started for you at the age of fifteen, right? So that was yes pretty young. Your body is still growing. Mm -hmm. Your bones are still growing. So yeah. Mm -hmm. so tell us a little bit about your story, how, how this, how this occurred for you. Sure. Yeah. So thank you, Sherry. Thank you for having me on. Um, so I always wanted to be in the healing professions or a doctor of some sort since I was a kid. And I was sort of searching for something that I believed really addressed the root cause of problems for people. Mm -hmm. And around the age of 15, I started having chronic neck and back pain. And I found out later, about 15 years later, that I had a, a genetic condition called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome that kind of predisposes me to joint pain and hypermobile joints. And so that kind of started me on my journey of seeking answers. And I was in and out of every different kind of Western medicine doctor and alternative healthcare strategy that I could find, trying to get pain relief and figure out why my body felt like it was turning on me. And it took years for me to find answers. And so through that journey, I was really inspired because I myself had to seek for answers. And so around like 21 or so, I found chiropractic and I started to get some relief and really started to understand how my spine and my nervous system affected my body. And then throughout my time in school, I found orthospinology, which is my specialty. And it's a really gentle form of chiropractic that just addresses the upper cervical, which is the first and second bone and how they align with the skull. And I, I went in, had my first upper cervical treatment and I went home and slept my first night without pain in 15 years. Wow, and it was like incredible. a miracle. Yep. And I, you know, until you've never, until you haven't been able to sleep at night, you don't understand like how precious sleep is. And that literally was the most beautiful gift I could get back was just to sleep throughout the night without pain. And wow. after I experienced that, I was like, I have to do this. This is what I want to help other people do and just help other people, you know, empower them on their health journey and see them heal. So that's, that's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I uh, talk about sleep quite a bit. I mean, I consider myself a sleep expert and I give talks about sleep just because you brought it up, you know, mm -hmm. say something about being a chiropractor, a doctor of chiropractic. How important is sleep? people oh, listen to this this is important yes it's so important because when you sleep is when your body has the chance to repair and heal and all of your tissues are renewing themselves every day and there's inflammation and toxins that build up in our body and sleep is that time for the body to not only repair itself physically but also emotionally and mentally and so if you're not sleeping at night the it's everything's just building and building and building until you know, at some point, usually there's a snap. There's a point where people are just, I can't go through this anymore. My pain's debilitating or whatever. And a lot of my patients will come in looking for help with pain. And then as they start getting care, they start sleeping better. And it's the level of health that they end up attaining is something they didn't think was possible just because their body's able to heal itself. Yeah. I mean, I know that there are so many things that affect sleep. Mm -hmm. You know, it can be some sort of muscular or skeletal pain. Mm -hmm. It could be, it could be a medication someone's on. It could be stress level. It could mm -hmm. be, I mean, there's so many different things. And I know when I talk to people, we kind of unravel that whole equation of what's going on and look at habits. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I think you probably would agree with me that the first thing is be aware of it. And, and actually before that is make it a priority. Because mm -hmm. we're so taught mm -hmm. in this culture of go, 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 
Um, mm -hmm. Not so much right now with dealing with COVID, but uh, yeah. people slowed down a little bit. It's like mm -hmm. the whole world is taking a breath, I think. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's to first really make it a priority. In fact, mm -hmm. I've, in the research I've done, I've, I've, you know, read where if you had to make a choice between exercising more or getting more sleep, most people would think it was exercise. Mm -hmm. but it's sleep. We need, we, we need mm -hmm. enough sleep to, to really hit all of those stages of sleep cycle mm -hmm. through it, you know, multiple times so that we wake up and, and our bodies actually had a chance to recover. It's so true. It is so true, Sherry. And I feel like in our society, people see it sometimes as lazy or as a, a treat, but it's, it's not a treat. It's self care. It's something that's vital and necessary, just like eating healthy food and drinking water all day. Sleep. I mean, everybody's need for sleep might vary a little bit, but we all need it and we need good sleep, quality sleep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't, didn't tell you I was going to ask you this question, but I know you'll be able sure. to answer it because I'm sure you talk <laughs> about it all the time. Yeah. So, you know, I love being able to give some tips about, in fact, I have this, this uh, video I've done called be your own massage therapist because mm -hmm. I've been a massage therapist for 30 years. Mm -hmm. So tell us some tips because we're all spending way too much time on the computer. We do that anyhow. Mm. We're on our devices. Mm -hmm. We're doing this all the time. But now, because we're not going out, we're communicating, you know, on Zoom. And, and I don't think we're going back. I mean, I think we're going to go out and see people again, but I don't think we're going right. to take out the communication, you know, virtual stuff. So mm -hmm. what are some things, it, you know, somebody could spend four to 12 hours a day in front of the computer, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm, for sure and pleasure so what would you say what are some things that you tell your patients for self-care some tips about stretching or you know mm -hmm. what do you got sure yeah I have a lot of things people ask about that a lot in care and one of the big things is I tell them to focus on being proactive rather than waiting for when the pain hits because pain is usually the last thing to show up so you may sit at the computer for four hours and you should have gotten up you know, at the first 30 minute mark or first hour mark and did a little stretching and just stayed on top of it all day so that it didn't domino and hit you at the end of the day instead of waiting until the end of the day when you're in pain. So I recommend one, one of my favorite things is for people to get a half circled foam roller. So, you know, normally people have the full circle foam roller. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you get one that's cut in half, it, it fits onto the ground and into the curve of your mid back really well. And you can lay it along your spine and lay down on it and allow your rib cage to open up opposite of how you're hunched over all day ah. at the desk. So it allows that rib cage to expand back. Okay. Okay. You can also use that while you're doing some trigger point exercises. You can use tennis balls to place, lay down a tennis ball, you know, on a knot and lay on top of it on the floor and work your arms around and roll those knots out. There's also salt baths. I love salt baths. I think that they're so crucial for getting inflammation out of the body. And if, you know, people can commit to even just twice a week, even once a week, taking a salt mm -hmm. bath, mm -hmm. that helps stay on top of it. But for me, it's really being, being proactive and getting up and stretching and working and, you know, recognizing your body and giving it what it needs before it's screaming at you. <laughs> right. Pay attention. I mean, pay pain, attention. Pain is the best teacher. And actually, mm -hmm. You know, over the years, I had clients that I, the clients that had kind of a chronic pain situation were the best at, they learned great information. So they were the best at taking care of themselves mm -hmm. moving forward because they knew what to do. They knew. And I, I mean, mm -hmm. I was one of those people. I had a back mm -hmm. issue that showed up, you know, in my thirties, mid thirties. And, um, I, and of course, being a massage therapist, you learn about body mechanics. So you mm -hmm. know how to make these slight adjustments because you're listening and mm -hmm. you're like, Oh, something, you know, I'm getting this alarm going off. What do I need to do to, to take, take, you know, unravel that alarm, mm -hmm. which is usually the opposite of what got you there to begin with. Yes, right? exactly. Even Relax, if it's a stress, I mean, stretch, yeah. even if it's the opposite posture of what got you in there, like I said, you're hunching all day, then do the opposite. And the big thing is I think people feel like, Oh, well, I don't have time. I don't have time to stretch. I don't have to get up and time to take a break from work. But if you don't see it as this hour long thing you have to do and you see it as maybe 30 seconds, I get up and I do five squats and I do a couple arm circles and I stretch and I sit back down. And if you just do that consistently, you'll get ahead of the pain. Yeah, no, I love that. Two things that I want to add to what you just said that mm -hmm. I think really helps 
it's helped me and I think mm -hmm. it helps, you know, to have a strategy of some kind. So one of the things I've done, I've been, been, um, I've been challenged by a coach before to, you know, put my mind into some positive p positivity, mm. like say an affirmation. So mm -hmm. I use my phone because who walks around without their phone? We don't leave the house without right. our phone. So you mm -hmm. can put alarms, you know, you put calendar alerts and you can put those on throughout the day, yes. to every hour, every half an hour. But mm -hmm. the other thing is if you're drinking a lot of water, which I'm mm -hmm. sure you're an advocate of drinking mm -hmm. water, you know, mine yes. stays, I, I, some days I leave my office and I have like, three or four glasses because I just didn't <laughs> use the same glass. Mm -hmm. So, but if you drink enough water, then you're going to have to get up and go to the bathroom. And right. so the other tip is I, I listened to a podcast. They were talking about tiny habits. I think that's the name of the mm -hmm. book. And so if you attach a new behavior to something that is an old habit, then mm -hmm. for instance, like one of the things that really stuck with me is how much time, you know, passes when we turn the shower on and we're waiting for it to heat up. Mm -hmm. So what can you do in that time frame? Well, you know, do some squats or do some mm -hmm. stretches. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's like, okay, I go to the bathroom throughout the day. So what can I do when I go to the bathroom? Mm -hmm. I can sit there and do a stretch right there, right? Mm -hmm. or on your way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got to get creative. We got to figure out ways we to, do. <laughs> to, you know, humor yourself and do something good for yourself at the same time. I think that's awesome advice. That is so great. I love the, just the word tiny habits because tiny habits add up to huge effects in your life. They really right. do. Right. It's a consistency. Yes. It's the little things is. we do consistently throughout the day and every day that, that I think make the biggest impact in how we feel. It's so true. I mean, it's like if you eat one salad one time, it's not really going to do anything, but if you eat a little bit of vegetables every day and you put that in your diet, you're going to see a difference. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. So what else can you share that, that really distinguishes you? Um, mm -hmm. Like, what do you, what, I know that you work with, you like working with people that are in pain. So yes, you mm -hmm. probably see people from a preventative standpoint as well. Yes. But what else can you tell the listeners about how you help people with pain and what they can do about it if they're in chronic pain. Sure. Yeah. So um, I love working with people with chronic pain because I lived through it and I know how relieving it can be to finally get some relief from it, even if it's just a little. Uh, so the thing with the chiropractic care that I do, it's not just about neck and back pain. The structures that we're working with are very important structures. So in this area right here, it's where your brain stem and your spinal cord come together. It's where these blood vessels go up your neck and feed your brain with oxygen. And it's where this fluid, cerebral spinal fluid, clears out through your head and drains the toxins out of your brain. And so when you have all these important structures going on right here in this area, if it's misaligned, it can cause all kinds of things like brain fog, fatigue, headaches, dizziness, lack of energy, lack of healing. And so I, I like to obviously work with people that have very, you know, common like neck and back pain or complex issues. But I also like to just work with people who feel like I'm just not as healthy as I should be. Because like I said before, pain is usually the last thing to show up. A lot of my patients will come in and say, oh, I've been having neck pain for two months or two years. And then I take an x-ray and I'm, I see the whiplash in their neck and it looks like it happened 10, 20 years ago. And their body did such a good job of adjusting to that trauma that they didn't feel the pain 10 years ago when it happened. And you know, how much healthier would they have been, would they be if they had done something about it when the trauma happened, you mm -hmm. know? And so that's where chiropractic care can be so preventative and such a proactive strategy for people is that, you know, your spine is enduring traumas all day long. You're sitting for 12 hours a day, you're having sports injuries, you fall down the stairs, whatever it is. And if your nervous system isn't able to flow clearly, then your body's not healing. So I try to really encourage people and I, and I work with people who are just, a lot of people come in and say, I just feel out of alignment. You know, like, I just feel like my, my hips are off every, my shoulders and even like mentally, emotionally, energetically, they feel out of alignment. And as we work on their spine and, and helping correct that, a lot of things come into alignment in their life more than just their body because they can think clearly, they sleep better and their energy gets better. Their vibration gets higher and you know so that's i'm working with people in pain but also helping them get in touch with their body and helping them just have a better quality of life overall it's interesting to me because it's all so connected it's all interconnected, interconnected. you know mm -hmm. it's like sleeping better 
thinking better, being more mm -hmm. positive, all of those things or being in pain or not being in pain, they all intertwine and connect and, and affect everything. You can't really isolate any, any one thing. No, so, you can't. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that's one of the things that why I love chiropractic too, is that it is a holistic look at the body. You know, mm -hmm. I think, um, I know for me, when I was fully practicing in massage, I mm -hmm. talked to clients that nobody ever, they didn't have anybody on their healthcare team that asked them about anything preventative or really mm. looked at anything holistic, you know, the whole mm -hmm. body. Mm -hmm. They looked at a specific condition mm -hmm. or symptom, and that was the only thing that was focused in mm. their typical medical care. So right. I, think, I think everybody should see a chiropractor. I um, agree. <laughs> I know there's a lot of chiropractors out there. I have relationships with a lot of chiropractors, and I think you have mm. to find somebody that is a great fit for you and stick with it and, you know, have them on your, you know, speed dial, so to speak, because and not for just a, because you fell off a ladder and hurt right. yourself right? But to come in and get regular, you know, it's like a balancing, a, literally an adjustment of kind of bringing your body back into balance. So, so true. Important. It is so true. It's, it really is a crucial part of our health. And what I love about the specialty that I do orthospinology is it, we don't do any of the twisting or um, popping manipulations in the cervical spine. Mm -hmm. So it's a really good option for people that are kind of afraid of the traditional adjustment. And they're like, you know, I want to have good spine care, but I just can't let anyone like crack my neck that way. You know, our type of care is totally different. And so if a patient has a really hypermobile neck or maybe they just have a fear of the regular type of chiropractic then there's an option for them yeah. there's a lot of different types of it out there and there's a type that can work for anybody i, I agree i agree so to wrap it up this is mm -hmm. this uh focus is about choosing vibrancy so mm -hmm. tell tell us what is a favorite self-care practice for you to stay vibrant how do you choose to be vibrant Yes. So my favorite thing is right in the morning when I wake up, the first thing I do is sit down and meditate and kind of, I basically ground myself. I clear my energy from the night and the day before, and I set my intention for the current day. And it is so crucial for me because I've noticed that as I've started to practice that consistently, and it's sort of the first thing I do when I wake up before my mind gets clogged with Facebook and emails and everything else. Yeah. I've just seen the universe open up to me in really amazing ways. It's, almost like a sense of divine timing and destiny start happening because there's intention behind the day and behind what I'm doing. And it really gives me a sense of peace that no matter what happens, even if I get in a fender bender on the way to work, like there's an kind of timing and a destiny to everything. It gives me an inner peace and it helps me to have confidence that I'm walking in the path that I'm supposed to be doing. I'm helping people the best way that I can. And so that's my favorite self care. It just keeps me grounded, keeps me from getting all anxious and, and, you know, self-doubt and things like that. I really love doing I love that. that. Yeah, because I mean, at the end of the day, the only thing we can control is ourselves and mm -hmm. how it's, it's not the things that happen to us because things happen to us because we live, you know, out in the world. And one of these days we'll live outside of our homes a lot more than we do yeah. right now. Hopefully. But what we, but what we control is our perspective mm. of how things, so things happen so and you know, it could be, it's like when you interview, you know, different people that have witnessed the same thing and everybody's got a different story because they have their own perspective. And so that's, you know, I think for me, that's the truth. And I know there are days that I don't, I run right into my office and get on the computer. Quite yeah. honestly, today was one of those days. Yeah. <laughs> but when it is that day and I realize that things have been kind of like misfiring, I will make sure at some point in the day that I get in my place where I meditate because I happen to have a little chair where I meditate. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'll make sure I, I don't go to bed before I have gotten in that mm. space. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's always best if you can start the day off that way. And I'm not, I don't live a perfect, you know, the most disciplined regimented None of us do. personality. <laughs> That's just kind of me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, but it makes all the difference. It's like, and, and I have this thing I call meditation minutes because mm -hmm. even I might've meditated in the morning and then mm -hmm. something kind of, you know, sideswipes mm -hmm. me. And so I can take, I can sit here in 30 seconds in front of my computer and kind of reground myself. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, I think it's, it, you become kind of in a, you know, in a good, in a good way, addicted to that. Yeah. That yes. centering, you know, it really makes all the difference in the world. So. 
It so does. And it, I think that goes in the same vein with what you were saying earlier about the tiny habits. You know, it could be 30 seconds of just reconnecting to yourself and centering. It doesn't have to be an hour long silent meditation, just something small to just yep. keep you on track. Yep. And I love that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Doesn't have to look any certain way. Just no, it doesn't. Find that, find that, that connection inside. So, so well, I've so enjoyed speaking with you and I know those yeah. that are going to clue in, uh, listen in will also as well. And I will make sure that we put in the chat, your contact information. So if okay. someone wants to get in touch with you directly to, to meet with you, to mm -hmm. have a consult with you, um, all the details of where you practice and more about you will be, will be right there. So great. great. Well, thank you so much for having me. I think it's great what you're doing and I'm happy to be a part of it. I love it. Thank you. Thank Take you, care. Sherry. Bye-bye. Bye.